we're going to do a quick short icebreaker of one question. So for tonight, my question is, you can say your name, just in case the people don't have it. And then it is on the screen, but then they know who's talking to. And then say your dog's name. And then how long you've been working with that dog. So for me, the picture on my screen, I have a picture of Azul up there. He is almost two years old. I've been working with him since he was a tiny puppy. And then not pictured, I also have Cam that I've been working with for almost seven years. And Cindy? Hi, I'm Cindy. I know all of you. And I have Nick, the Corded Standard Poodle. He kind of everybody knows who he is, I think, that has seen me around. <laughs> and he's just over two, and I've been working with him for about two years now. And I also have Poe, and she's retired, and right now she's enjoying spring weather at my boyfriend's house. Oh, that's cool. All right. And oh, so Sarah then, says yeah, I was trying to watch things, too. So, yep. Uh, so our kind of rule of thumb with the muting on this is going to be as long as it's just a few of us and we're not talking over each other. There's no need for everyone to be muted. I want everyone to be able to share their voice. Um, you can mute if you're more comfortable with that. Or if the group grows to be too big where it's too hard to manage, I will mute everyone and then unmute when somebody is given permission to talk. So we still want everybody to talk. We just don't want to be overwhelmed. So I'm going to quickly introduce Ashlyn. And everybody Hi. knows her. Hi, Ashlyn. Um, she has a service dog, Lily. And how old is Lily? Two, eight. Eight. the eight. All right. I knew she was around that, but couldn't remember. And so then um, let's just go in order of check-in. Otherwise, we'll go to Ray. Ria. Ria. I'm Ria. Yeah, sorry. I always say your name wrong. Okay. Everybody gets it wrong. And I have Guinness. He's um, going to be four next month. And he's been, he's had some challenges. I've been working with him for two years. He's still in training, which is fine. Dogs take different amounts of time. Um, but he's working on scent work right now and alerting because my needs have changed over the years. All right. And Sarah. I know Cindy already kind of introduced you, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm Sarah. I have a spaniel named George. He's three, and I bought him when he was a year old. So I've had him for two years now. All right. So tonight's topic is do words matter? And of course, we can throw out the first set of words that's commonly talked about in force free training, which is the word of giving a dog a command versus giving a dog a cue. I'm pretty sure most of us would be in agreement that we use the word cue in that aspect. Instead of command, I want to give my dog suggestions, not orders. But that's me. Anybody else want to chime in on those two words? I, I, I forget sometimes, but Q is much better. It puts you in a different mindset, in my opinion. Right. And that's kind of the whole meaning of if words matter, why do they matter? Well, so, go with ahead. The word, with the word Q, you're asking for a conditioned response. With the, with the, word, command, with the word command, you're giving an order for something and if the, with the implication that if you don't do if you don't get do what I ask tell you to do not ask what I tell you to do you will get positive punishment mm -hmm. and I think there's a huge you know it's a huge once you, uh, uh, it's semantics generally when you're just talking to dog people you can tell what kind of trainer you're talking to but Really, when it gets down to whether what you're doing, I think it is important because I think um, our positive trainers really don't want to give their dogs commands. We want highly reinforced cues that we expect 
you know, we give you, we tell you to do that, you do it, but that doesn't mean we're going to go. You don't, you don't come when I call you, I'm going to, you know, give you a big zap. Um, And I, but, you know, I think it just, it's, I think it's a good indicator when you're talking to people where, what their perspective is, where they're at on their training journey. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Although like Rhea said, a lot of us are, you know, brain fog issues, whatever, cognitive things. Sometimes we forget and use the wrong word. I've tried really hard to make Q my word, so it's pretty good for me. But then I also then have to practice not letting my hackles get up when I hear somebody that's maybe not so experienced use the word command because they just aren't used to practicing the word Q. A lot of them learned it from a previous trainer, too. So they're just learning to change their words. Right. So have- True. And, and if you're like me, you took do- your first dog training course in the 1970s. You gave commands and you enforced the commands. And that was the only thing that was being taught out there. And um, if that's what you were on, that's if that's what you've ever been exposed to and you just haven't changed your vocabulary, you know, and everybody's in a different spot on their journey. So, you know, I try not to get my hackles up when people say command. And I've seen people in our positive groups get their hackles up. Yeah, I think that's my main issue with even the discussion of Q versus command is it's used as such a divisive thing when really... I don't know. I guess so. My recent experience with it was I went to a seminar, a behavior seminar hosted by a positive reinforcement trainer. And she just, she lost half her audience the second she started mocking someone for saying command. And it wasn't even like, you know, she wasn't interacting with them well. It was just like, oh, I don't give my dogs commands, I give them cues. <laughs> and you could see how the audience was done. Yep, I, so I think she she really missed out on a huge opportunity there. Hi, yeah, Christy. The I'm just gonna say hi, Christy. Thank you for joining. Hi, Hello. We're Sorry, talking hi, about Christy. the difference between cues and commands. Do we want to have Christy introduce herself like yes. we all have? Yes. Um. So quickly, your name. We obviously see that. But then um, your dog's name and how long you've been working with that dog or multiple dogs, if you have multiple. My name's Christy Kinley and then, or just Christy. And then um, I have a service dog in training whose name is Hodor. He's uh, five now and I've been working with him since he was, well, I got him about two when he was two and um we probably didn't start working with him actually for the dog training till maybe six months old or so you know with trainers and but we had not a good trainer then we had a very adverse trainer and so we it didn't go well then we went found later positive and stuff so and then um I also have another dog who I've had, I think she's 10 or 11 now. I adopted her in 2013 when she was about two or three. And then, um, so, and she's wonderful. So, but she's not as um, easy to train as Hodor is. (laughs) But Hodor has backdraft because I've not honestly trained in good in the past couple years or so, very off and on. So he's regressed or not, you know, he's backtracked. That's actually very common. Yeah. With COVID and everything, a lot of people are back, set back. Can I ask a question on that? Mm -hmm. Is that, is it just me or is a lot of this because some of us have not been able to get out as much because of the situation. Mm -hmm. 
in our world right now. Yeah. That's a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of it for me is we haven't, I mean, we didn't do public access. I think last year we did twice. We went to Home Depot once and a doctor's office once. And then we did do his rally obedient or rally obedience advance classes, you know, with the trainer. But um, as far as like going out in public, we didn't do. And then, but also my home training, I just wasn't doing like I normally did all the time. And which is unusual for me because I've always done it all the time. But I went into some depression, really bad depression, and was having some mental issues and and then health issues and um, real bad health issues. Mm -hmm. And and then I just kind of... I, I think... I don't want to yeah. cut you off, but I, I think with um, COVID, that put a lot of us in just a world spin of what to do. Now, I had just lost my I service dog when COVID started. So Azul has only known COVID shutdowns. And oh. because of where I live, you know, so he didn't really suffer because we were in a very low risk area and I still felt safe doing some very protective public access when he was younger but he's known nothing else but social distancing so but I think that has set back a lot of people because even if you didn't strictly social distance yourself and stay in for a while a lot of us also got sick which then you know caused more complications and it, it just spiraled and nobody is back to a new normal yet and most of us are most of us are service dog handlers here, and you know it's very e it, it, it's very easy to have your dog. You know, if you have a health issue come up, it's generally going to set you back more than it would somebody who doesn't have any kind of disability, and so it sets your service dog back more. Right. It right. does, yeah. Plus, I think the depression that Christy mentioned—that's part of COVID today. too. Oh yeah. yeah. And I think we need to get to Patty. Yeah, um, Patty. Patty gets the two questions now. All We're right. asking everybody their name, their dog that they're work their dog or dogs that they're working with and about how long they've been working with those dogs. My name is Patty Heath. I'm actually the person that the Patricia Heath Act was named after in 2017. They got passed here in Arkansas to bring the service dog law for the state up to par with the ADA. So I pushed three years to get that done. Um, my dog at the time when I started having a service animal was Amber Rose, standard Aussie, Red Merrill. This is Isabella back here you see moving around. Uh huh. And she is my psychiatric service animal. And then I also have Micah Russell who is also the same breed but a different color. And he does the same thing, but each of them do a different task that the other doesn't. So I can take both if I have to, but I, I try to stick with one. Right. It's just me. But if I travel, I be, take both. That's got to be difficult sometimes to handle two dogs at the same time. Yeah, but I have one of those um, Kurgo, le um, the rough wear leashes that you can put, a, put them over your shoulder. So I just put them both over my shoulder. I love my shoulder oh. straps. <laughs> So we had a quick discussion over cues versus commands and pretty much everybody here at the time is in agreement that we try to use cues, but we also try not to be bothered by someone who uses commands. My next set of words for discussion are obedience versus manners. So if you're working with just your dog, you may not be as opinionated in this. But if you work with anyone else, whether they're just other dog people that are friends or family, or you work with clients, or, you know, you work with other service dog teams, then you might be a little bit more opinionated. But obedience versus manners, um, to me, that means, you know, obedience is kind of the old school. It goes with commands. Like Cindy said, we give a command, 
we expect obedience. Whereas I don't teach, I teach classes uh, both virtually and in person, but I don't teach obedience classes and I never have. I teach manners classes, helping your dog learn to survive in your world, not my world, your world, whoever that, you know, the handler is there because everybody's world is different. I'm curious what other people use there. Anybody? Well, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pop in and say, I'm Cindy and I'm the other, I'm the co-host of this. And, um, I'm going to pop in and say, I use obedience to mean formal obedience when you're competing. And I use or, or rally to mean when you're competing in those spe specific disciplines. But when I take my dog out in public, I expect the same level of behavior, if not more. And I consider it manners. And nice. I don't get on people's yeah. case that say they want to teach their dog obedience it's just, I want house, I want a well-mannered dog. I don't want an obedient dog that follows commands. Anybody so I'm else? kind of a mixed person. Sorry. <laughs> it's, no, that's <laughs> a valuable, to... valuable point. Anybody else? I guess I, I'm kind of in agreement with Cindy. I guess I forgot. I actually have two dogs. I got one a month ago. She has no obedience skills, but she is a well-mannered dog. So I guess in my mind, I've always thought of those as completely separate things. You know, she doesn't know sit. She doesn't know down. I'm not teaching her any of that yet. But overall, I would say she has manners. I have a handler friend that taught me something. And I use it because not only does it help the dog, but some people think I'm saying it to the person. And it's a good way to put a point across to some rude people as well. If we're in a store and my dog is showing interest in someone and shouldn't be, I'll say, she taught me to say, mind your business. And I'm actually talking to my dog. Nice. Which is only none of their manners, but the person thinks I'm saying it to the person. And sometimes <laughs> that can be a very good thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going I'm to jump in and say, Christy, does, this rem does that remind you of a, a, none of your business? <laughs> <laughs> Christy and I took a class where they were always saying, it's none of your business. Teach your dog. It's none of their business. Nice. I've always used leave it with them when they do something like that. And then it doesn't throw people around me as if I'm trying to be rude to them. I just go leave it. Good dog. Yeah, but I don't say it to the dog. I say it to the person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I use I leave it as well. And sometimes the people think it's directed at them. <laughs> Leave it, I, I leave it, leave it yeah, both part of the obedience classes I did at PetSmart with Izzy, as well as with Micah. So both of mine have been through obedience classes. Both of mine have canine good citizens. And I pretty much expect them to behave when I'm out and about and they're doing their job. But when they yeah. go home, they can do whatever they want. Their dog. <laughs> they still yep. do their job, but they get to be a normal dog. Right. Yep. That brings us to another set of words that I didn't write down in my list that I wanted to go over, but leave it versus it's your choice. I mean, leave it is more of a command, although it's a cue for me that tells my dog, if you leave it, something better will come your way and it doesn't follow punishment like we talked about earlier with commands. Yes. But um and, it's, and I just haven't trained myself to get past that word yet. So I still use leave it. I tend to use an interruption noise when I can. So you'll see me, it, if I'm out and about, I'll make interruption noises if my dog's not paying attention and I want them to pay attention. And I was initially going to use a kissy noise, but then people make kissy noises at dogs. So I kind of go. Brr! And well, he will, um, quickly, Ashlyn was trying to say something. Ashlyn has a hard time speaking, so typing is easier for her. Yeah, she, I don't see that she typed anything. I've yeah, I have up. the chat open. Okay. We, we talked to Ashlyn quite a bit. She's actually okay. another one of my co-partners, so nope, it's perfect. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. Well, I've, right. I've met her, so I okay. have met her in person. I live in Arkansas. She's yeah. in Jonesboro. I'm down in Conway. And yeah, I have actually okay. helped down, teach her what she needs to do to educate about. 
Nice, nice. Nice. All right. Ashlyn, did you have something about leave it? Or? No. no. Uh, I was just. Uh, uh. And you can use the chat if you'd prefer. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. Anybody else have that while Ashlyn's typing her thing in chat? I'll use it. I'll use both of them actually, because I'll use like um, I will say leave it, but then like sometimes I'll tell Hodar, like um, what's the word I use? Um, oh gosh, I'm sorry, the words don't come out. That's okay. We all have that. What is, what is it? It's something with the W. Ah. Oh. Wait. Want? No. <laughs> what do you want? I ask Azul what he wants all the time. I also tell him pick one is a common thing. If there's two choices available, say a ball and a tug rope, I'll tell him to pick one. Oh, Ashlyn was just agreeing with me. So. Okay. I, I always my my Izzy does this. Micah doesn't. He just doesn't want to take anything. Period. But if if Izzy sees somebody she likes at the clinic, because I volunteer at a spay neuter clinic, if she sees one of the employees she likes, she'll she'll stop. Then look at me like, is it okay if I go get some attention? And I'm like, go ahead. And then she just gets your attention. But she looks at me like, is it okay? Right. That's and she's nice. praised for that. Yes. I've always used positive reinforcement. Yep. I think uh, this we... thing too, the therapy dog at the clinic that I go to, where my, all my doctors are, he, he just goes up to all of them. And if they're having a bad day, they love on him. But he comes right back to me, so I don't worry too much about it. He just thinks they need him. They think they need him too, so it works out. <laughs> right. I let people pet Azul all the time as well. Our I next think, set of think, words. Oh, unless you I have something I, on that, go ahead. No, I think I remember. I think I says, um, "What are you? What are you supposed to do? Or what do you got to do? Something like that." And then right. because um, he's supposed to lay down when I eat, not sit or stand. Or, or I said, "What are you supposed mm -hmm. to be doing? Or what do you got to do? Something like that." Mm -hmm. I, it's something um, like. Quote me. My my brain's not thinking. Yeah. Nope. We all have brain fog issues, or at least everybody here that I know of. So <laughs> I, I, I just I even see. have brain farts and I'm 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I just want to add one comment about the leave it. One thing I have seen. Am I are you guys hearing me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. One thing I have seen at a local group that I go to for training that I train with um, is and this is kind of a group that's on a spectrum on the from balance to our positive but leaning way towards our positive and a lot of people bark the leave it like leave it you know like really kind of an angry tone and that's one of the reasons I don't want to train that particular word with my words with my dog because I don't want him to have to listen. I don't want to bark commands like because they hear so well. Right. Mm -hmm. That very, makes very sense good. actually. You can use almost any word. They don't care about the word <laughs> itself. They care about what you're teaching with it. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of times they'll read your body motion too. I, I've yeah. noticed with mine. Right. Mm -hmm. but I'll, use, I'll use this too. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I made it up. Like this is the letter L, and I'll go like that for like, I don't know uh -huh. what the language is for leave it. So I'll go like that. <laughs> Your dogs <laughs> learned it. it. That's all that counts. Yep. I know some people that will use the hand signals that they like. I've learned with obedience class more than they will the commands with their mouth because the dog focuses on you and know what that means. Same thing as this, some, I've, I've watched a lot of the officers here, they'll use German words. They'll say right. it in German. 
with the dogs. That's so that people can't distract them with the English words. Exactly. Right. That's exactly what Major Clay Smith explained to me. Mm -hmm. And he was with the canine unit here for like 25 plus years. And he's a he's not a service dog trainer, but he does obedience and CDC. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. My daughter used to complain when I when she was learning ASL because I had taken it before she did, and she said, "It's not fair that you can yell at me from across the room and nobody else knows it." Because <laughs> <laughs> with ASL, it's all about emphasis. So I would I would do this for sit down if she was being naughty, and then if she really be naughty than it was <laughs> and it's all about how you do it it's the same sign it's just how you do it and you right. can do something with that you know. right what's the next set penny all right our next word and this is going to depend on if you're actually a trainer or if you go to a trainer well and that is actually one of our words using the word trainer versus the word coach versus team leader so if you see clients what do you refer to yourself as? Or if you go to a dog expert, I don't want to use one of those words, but a dog expert for help, do you search for one that is labeled as a trainer or do you ser search for one that's labeled as a coach or team leader or something oh. else avoiding the word trainer? I call myself an owner trainer. And when I go to a trainer, I basically focus on one that can help me with what I need the help for. I, I don't go by titles or anything. I ask questions. I, if you can help me with this, this, or this, I'm stuck on this. I've gotten them to do this, 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 and so forth. I just need some help with, you know, a certain task. I don't ever go by titles. I go by the experience they have, what they know, and other stuff of that sort. I don't go by a title. Nice. Anybody I'm, else? I'm struggling with some issues that luckily I wasn't necessarily getting the help I needed. And luckily I'm friends with someone in another service dog group that turned me on to Penny and Cindy. <laughs> so I don't care what your title is if you can help me with my issues that I'm having. The title doesn't mean as much as your knowledge does. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So my opinion on it is I work with, so I have thought, because I want a certain level on my dog. I want to get some obedience titles. I want some rally titles. Basically, I want to get them involved. I want some agility. And I've never competed. I've done one, exactly one competition with the dog. Um but I'm competitive. I've done other competitive things. And I, so, and I'm good at figuring out, seeking out where to get the help. So I have multiple trainers that do, that help me with multiple different things. I have, a, I call them either a coach or a trainer, depending, but I call myself a trainer, whether I'm helping somebody or I'm working with my own dog, anybody who's working with their own dog to teach their dog something is training their dog, their, uh, their dog and therefore they're a trainer. But the person you're seeking could be a trainer, you could refer to them as a trainer, a coach, a teacher, a mentor, mm -hmm. depending on where, what your relationship is. And you know, if you have a large broad base on what your um, knowledge is on how to teach a dog how to do things, you're definitely a trainer and when you're seeking somebody out you might be seeking a coach or a mentor or a trainer but if you know it, it really depends it depends on what your mindset is and i'm not going to scold anybody for using the wrong words because i don't know where they are personally on their journey of dog training they could be just starting out they could have been taking balanced classes all along and this is the first time they've ever had positive you know positive reinforcement training you know, it, it really depends on where they're at. You want to meet them where they're at and make sure that you can reach them and that they're able to understand what's going on. So it's a, it's not the old fashioned, you know, you go to class and you, you get barked at by the, the trainer type thing. Yeah, I think like 
from a marketing standpoint, it makes sense to call yourself a trainer though, because if I was seeking someone out, like when I was looking for help with hunt tests, getting started in them, I literally Googled hunt test trainer, my area. I wouldn't put relationship dog relationship coach with my area to Google that. You actually brought up the whole point that started this thought in my mind. So I was attending recently a conference. Um, I'm a behavioral consultant, have a certificate in that. But I was attending a conference with other behavioral consultants. And their whole, I don't know, topic was choosing words more appropriately to help get away from, you know, the old style command, trainer, obedience into a newer, softer, kinder terminology. But for Sorry, where I here. live, all right, so my husband makes the joke all the time in the very rural community that we live in, that we're still in the 1980s technology-wise, and we are mentality-wise, too. So if I put myself down as a partnership coach or canine coach or anything like that, nobody around would find me. I have to travel two hours to find another force-free trainer. That's drive time at 55 miles an hour, two hours in any direction to find another force-free trainer. There's a couple of force-based or dominance-based trainers that I could throw something at and hit, but there aren't any other positive trainers. So I'm trying to really help people see that, you know, even if they only come to me once or twice, I want to start them down that road of thinking positively. But if Mm -hmm. I labeled myself as one of those other names, which I think of myself more as a coach or a team mentor or something to that effect, but I can't use that terminology on my website and on my Facebook page or nobody's going to find me. You could put it underneath the word trainer so that they start thinking that direction. I could, but I already have behavioral consultant underneath that word, too, to show that I'm more than just the standard. And to be honest, I think that would help because I have had so many, and I mean so many, contact me about an animal, you know, behavior, animal behaviorist here in Arkansas where I live. And Mm -hmm. there are only maybe two or three that I know of so far. So that I always try to keep a list of trainers where they're at in the state and so forth and point others to them. Yep. I actually live in the upper peninsula of Michigan and in the whole UP. So that's two hours tall and eight hours wide drive time. I know where that is. I have a friend (laughs) whose mother lives in Stevenson. So I'm on the south side. Oh, I'm pretty close to Stevenson, actually, in the Norway area. I've been up in Stevenson. So I've been through Marinette and so forth down there. Yep. I'm a little bit further west, but not far. But the other behaviorist that lives in the UP is in Marquette, one of the biggest towns in the UP, and they're on the far north. So if you go east or west, you don't have access to a behaviorist. We're both kind of right in the dead center of the UP, but one on the south, one on the north. But Mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, she's two hours away from me, but easily four hours away from other people in the UP. Mm -hmm. So. where I live, I'm in California, and I'm pretty much in the middle of the state. I'm in the Fresno area. Fresno is not a small town. It's close to um, like half a million people at least plus, and the surrounding area is bigger. Um, There's not that many force-free trainers, uh, except the agility people. And um, even them, even then I'm questionable about a couple of them. And um, I've looked just to see what the manners type trainers, you know, that you'd take your pet to, the pet training people have. And most of them are not force-free force free or are positive trainers. Um, other than unless you go to PetSmart or Petco. And I know PetSmart's in my actual town, Clovis, the trainers are both really good. So, um, you know, it, it depends on, I don't think if you market as something other than a trainer, I think that there's, people aren't going to find you if they're looking, especially if they're looking for pet stuff 
or if you're going into like a like Sarah the Hunt's test skills, right? Or um, you know, agility. I think they're going to say coach because that's just the way agility is kind of a sport for both. But um, you know, it's it's just people's nature. They're you know, it's been trainer for so long. I think that that title is going to be difficult to unstick. Right. I totally see that. So just for the people that aren't used to doing our Zooms, I want to say this real quickly. Um, We use a free version of Zoom. So it only gives us 40 minutes, which is why I don't start until right up until the time frame. And I see that we have less than two minutes. So I want to kind of wrap this up now, unless people are dying to continue the conversation, we can start another one using the same link, but otherwise we can go ahead and wrap up. Um, If you want to just either leave a positive comment right now verbally or in the chat, or if you want to do that in the Facebook event or the Working Pause page, for those of you that are not in my Working Pause page, Cindy is also an admin there, so if you came through her, she can help you get there. Ashlyn as well, so Patty, she can help you get there. Um, It's a short little or small little group. We have about 50 people in it. We discuss things like this, but this the Zoom information for these chats will always be in that group. So it's a safe group. If anybody ever needs legal assistance, let me know. I can point you to a group that can help you, run by an ADA employee. Thank you. Nice. Yes. Thank you. I'm lucky I'm in a state that actually over protects or protects our dogs a little bit more than other states. And so is Christy. (laughs) Yeah, I don't have that. Michigan has some of the worst service dog laws there is, but I don't have access issues in my rural environment. So, you know, while I am working with legislature to change the laws, it doesn't really well, impact me all that much. We I'll have leave less it. than a minute. It's going to cut off. Laws, but, but not, they don't enforce them in the small towns. I know that. <laughs> we have guide dogs and CCI in this state, so we're set. I do want to thank everybody for coming. I think it was a great topic. Yes. Um, we will yes, ha- post the topic for next week in the Working Pause group. And I hope you guys all come back 